Hello and welcome to Attention Central Texas. I'm your host, Charles Jenkins, and today we have another wonderful sh show in store for you. We have Dr. Diane Howard, who's going to talk to us today about redemptive, redemptive feature films. Hello and welcome to today's show. Thank you. It's wonderful to be here with you, Skeeta. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Dr. Howard, first tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I have just retired from 25 years of university teaching performance studies. I was responsible for teaching skills and techniques, history for radio, television, film, e-media, and platform, as well as theater, I guess, as well. So it was a very, very broad field that I was responsible for at the University of Mary Hardin Baylor here in Texas. I just retired a year ago. I was uh, almost immediately asked by a company in Texas, HD Texas, with which you are very familiar at um, this point, if I would serve on the uh, crew of a huge feature, epic, redemptive film, The Prodigal. Serve initially as the dialogue dialect coach, which I had been doing on movies even while I was teaching, mm -hmm. mostly from a distance through e-technologies at a distance. But now they asked me if I would be on set. I began to work with Mike, Michael Walters, who you know very well now, mm -hmm. who is the executive producer for The Prodigal, who is also the owner of HD Texas. He then asked me if I would help produce this movie because of my vast and long experience with, with uh, productions of all kinds. So I've been working with him on producing this movie and then it turns out that he has had many investors interested in his work, scripts are coming to him and right now we're working on producing five movies or he is working on producing them and I'm helping in various various ways. You have now been cast in three of those movies which is really exciting so you have a personal interest in these movies. So that's what I'm currently doing. But for a long time, I have been studying film from a Christian perspective, taking a look at what Christians have done for actually centuries now with, um, with various kinds of, um, yeah, I guess centuries, the last couple centuries, mm -hmm. uh, movies and films of various kinds. Recently, filming has become digital, so it's become more accessible to almost everyone and therefore almost anyone can make a film. So I've been especially concerned that we understand the art of filmmaking mm -hmm. and have been studying that from a Christian perspective. And speaking from the Christian perspective, of the things you have researched and gathered together, what have you noticed that's going on right now? Well, there's a lot, but let me, let me start with, maybe I can give a, a historic perspective. First of all, uh, as far as our current history goes, it's obvious that people are seeing more movies than they are reading books. Yeah. So I am very concerned that the movies that we produce are edifying, that they lift people up even though they entertain, uh, they can still enlighten as well. So I'm very concerned for not only our national culture but for the global cultures that filmmaking is edifying as well as entertaining. I think right now it's particularly critical because we have a great deal of desperation in our mm -hmm. world, you know, and this began, ironically, it began at the turn of the 20th century when there was a belief in social evolution, mm -hmm. the belief that people were in evolving and improving. Mm -hmm. However, then we had World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam. We've had, we have horrible terrorism problems today. We have threats of nuclear disasters. Uh, we have a very, very dangerous world in which we live, and so we're all struggling for mm -hmm. hope and optimism. You're one of the most optimistic people <laughs> I know, but and I know that you're concerned about that too, that we administer hope, and I think a wonderful way to do that is through films yes, and through movies. But today we have, as Christians, producing uh, a broad range of, of films. We have films that are categorized as faith-based or Christian or Christian worldview. There are also family films, mm -hmm. uh, films that are inspirational. So there are a lot of little categories and labels for the kind of work that people are, are doing today. Also, there are different audiences. So sometimes the audience are 
audiences are general audiences mm -hmm. sometimes it's just adults sometimes just children sometimes just for churches or just for ministries others are producing work for for general audiences and theaters and that's what I'm doing okay so what I'm doing now is with Michael Walters and all the others who are working with him we are working to produce high quality artistic movies for for theaters mm -hmm. that will be viable alongside the other films that are, people are seeing. So these are large budgets, big epic mm -hmm. films. So what is, uh, what kind of notes Hollywood is taking about Christian movies? Not just Hollywood though, uh, Hollywood, LA, New York, what messages and what notes have they been taking oh, about? Oh, they've What's definitely been on? taking notes, but for <laughs> them, oftentimes it's about the money mm -hmm. because there is a market there. Mm -hmm. So there is a market there and they realize that. For us, we our, our desire is to reach the population generally. So we want to, you know, we want to do that. But we're marketable because we are we are re redemptive filmmakers, and Hollywood knows that <laughs> there's money in that. Uh, and I, I think we are also positioned beautifully here in Texas because I think we've had more professional redemptive movies being made for many, many years here in Texas than probably any other state in, in the country. Wow. Movies that we've seen in the theaters. Mm -hmm. Movies like The Blind Side or Seven Days in Utopia that was filmed here or even Temple Grandin, redem redemptive, wonderful movies that any anyone could see and enjoy. So... Um, we have that history here and now as Christians and redemptive filmmakers we're we're wanting to produce our movies that are of that same caliber mm -hmm. that people can go to see in theaters. What um what is Michael thoughts on this in regards to just seeing uh, inspirational and powerful message go out to people that not only say you know what that was a good picture but you know what I went away from this movie with a message of hope and encouragement that I can get through the things that are going on. There. Right. I think uh, for us, I would not describe the the films that we're doing. He and I are very much of one of mind. Of just amazing, and it's become more obvious as this year has progressed. But I think we are not so concerned about a message film mm -hmm. as in telling truth through a character-driven story. I got you. See what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. So the characters would be multidimensional. They would be unpredictable. They would be complex characters. So so often the faith-based films have been a little more stereotypical, uh, a little more one-dimensional, the characters, not as, as complex as you would see in a mm -hmm. big movie in the theater or even that you would order for, on your DVDs. So... Um, the message comes through a character-driven story. Okay. What, uh, something I didn't, uh, haven't talked about that you feel need to be discussed with people, uh, would you, would you share that right now? Well, I, what I'm concerned is, uh, mo mostly about today is the professionalism. What's happening with many of the faith-based movies that are, that are associated with churches is that they are using volunteers. The problem with that is that the quality goes down with yeah. volunteers. So what we're doing is working very, very hard to find investors who will invest multiple millions of dollars so that we can have the very best uh, quality, the most professional cast, the most professional crew, so that every aspect of these movies will be professional and will be viably interesting, engaging to general audiences and theaters. What's different about uh, this movie than movies you that the movies you're working on now than the ones you've done in the past? Well, <laughs> it's interesting because th this movie, it's, it's interesting there are, in all the movies I'm working on right now, there are strong female heroines, but they are, uh, they're very much action thrillers, you're going mm -hmm. to find. We have one of the best stunt coordinators in the country, Jackson Burns, who is our stunt co coordinator for a prodigal, and we're going to see stunts that have never been seen before. Absolutely astounding from the m moment that movie opens. Wow. When I first read that script and I saw what was going on as far as stunts, I thought, whoa, where is this going to go from here? <laughs> but it goes. It keeps going, 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 going. So it's very much of an action thriller. All of these movies are. Um, they're, they're very much authentic. It's, 
our goals are very similar to uh, Roma Downey's and Mark Burnett Burnett's goals for the Bible, where they were they wanted to look gritty, to look authentic, to look more mm -hmm. realistic. That's what we're looking, but yet high quality. So that's what we're looking for. Okay. So it's, they're not going to be pristine movies. <laughs> I mean, they're going to be very honest, authentic, but yet at the same time hopeful and redemptive. And when uh, speaking of the movies, when are they scheduled to come out, or which one will be the first one to come well, out? Well, we don't know for absolute certain because we're working with investors right as we speak. Okay. But it looks likely that the prodigal will go first, okay. probably very soon, okay. maybe mid-May, okay. and uh, but early summer, and then uh, I don't know about the order of the others that, but the next ones will be Ruth, and then the deadliest gun. Ruth is, as you know, you're in all of these movies as as a principal character, <laughs> but Ruth is a story set in the Civil War. Uh, it's based on, it's inspired by the biblical story, but. It's about abolitionists in mm. the Civil War. And then The Deadliest Gun is almost a true grit type of story where two little girls um, orchestrate justice in a small town. So that those two films will be the next ones. And okay. then, then My Heart Dies With You, and then Michael has another uh, television movie that we're working on. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, I mean, almost every day there's some new project. It's amazing. <laughs> he, he seems like he works all the time. <laughs> well, I don't know how he... This is Michael Walters we're speaking of, but I don't know how in the world he juggles all the mm -hmm. details of all these films. I mean, it's just amazing how well, he does uh, that. We have about a minute and a half left. Do you have any, I know the time went fast and maybe we need to do this again. Do you have any final thoughts? Yes, I do. We need to support good movies that are in theaters. Mm. Uh, so when you see a good movie there available, go see it and support <laughs> it. And of course, pray for the people who are, are, who are producing those yes, because it's quite a monstrous task. Would you say Michael is a man of Christian values? Oh, definitely. Because I know you are, so. Definitely, just, okay. absolutely definitely. But he's also uh, an amazing businessman. Okay. So we are in the midst of huge projects, yes, epic <laughs> projects that God has given us to produce. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Howard, I want to take this time to say thank you for being on the show today and thank you for all you do in inspiring people on pro films and, and being an inspiration to me. So oh, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> you're an inspiration my, yourself. <laughs> and thank you, our viewers, for tuning in to Attention Central Texas.